In part seven of lecture one, we will see two last examples. The compound interest program that we've written is still going to print the data for every year for over a period of close to 400 years. That's a lot of data, most of which we don't really care about that much, not to the point of having it for every year. Having the data for every 10th year or every 20th year would be more than good enough. Now, there are a couple different ways that we could do that. We're going to pick what may seem like the simplest way, which is to simply use integer division and take a look at the remainder that we get when we divide a year by either 10 or by 20. The temptation when we divide 5 by 3 is to say that our answer will be 1.6667. But that's not how we learned to do division when we were back in third grade. We learned that it was 5 divided by 3 was 1 remainder 2, and that 16 divided by 3 is 5 remainder 1. There is a quotient, the value that we get when we divide it, and there is the remainder. And in this particular case, what we are particularly interested in is the remainder. It should not be surprising that we are using the slash to indicate division. Now, if I'm dividing one integer by another integer, as you probably saw in Python, the result of dividing one integer by another integer will give us an integer quotient but that also means that there's going to be a remainder. The way in which we can find the remainder is to use the percent sign as an operator instead of the slash. That will give us the remainder when I divide five by three by writing five percent three. This program is called div test because we are testing division and not just once or twice we will be taking a look at dividing 8 by 3 and we will get the quotient and then the remainder. We'll do this for 2 divided by 3, 49 divided by 3, 49 divided by 7, and negative 8 divided by 3. We will follow this by dividing negative 2 by 3, negative 2 by negative 3, 2 by negative 3, negative 49 by 3, negative 49 by negative 3, and 49 by negative 3. Lastly, we'll look at dividing negative 49 by 7, negative 49 by negative 7, and 49 by negative 7. What we want to see is how the signs that we give on the dividend and the divisor will affect the result that we'll get for the quotient and the remainder. That's something we'll see momentarily. We can now see some of the results that we would get from this. 8 divided by 3 is 2. 8 mod 3, where we get the remainder, is also 2. 2 divided by 3 is 0. 2 mod 3 is 0, because the result is 0 remainder 2. 49 divided by 3 is 16, and 49 mod 3 shows us that the remainder after division is 1. 49 divided by 7 gives 7, and 49 mod 7 gives us 0. Now, the other results don't show us any new figures, but it is important to take a look at what the sign is. If either the dividend or the divisor is negative, but not both, we will get a negative quotient. Minus 8 divided by 3, negative 2 divided by 3, negative 2 divided by 2. Those last two, the remainder is 0. It's not positive or negative. Negative 49 divided by 3 gives us negative 16. If, on the other hand, I can take a look, I can see that negative 2 divided by negative 3, even if there were a non-zero answer for the quotient, it would still be positive. 
If you take a look at the remainders, if the dividend is negative, then the remainder will be negative. Negative 8 mod 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 mod 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 mod negative 3 is also negative 2. The last three sets of operations really doesn't give us any new numbers. We've seen these quotients and remainders before, but what is different in several cases is whether there's a negative sign or not. When I'm dividing a negative number by a negative number, I'll get a positive quotient, just as if both numbers were positive. On the other hand, if one, either the dividend or the divisor is negative and the other one is positive, the quotient is negative. It doesn't matter at all about the divisor when I'm looking at the remainder. If the dividend is negative, the remainder is negative. If the dividend is positive, the remainder is positive. We are going to look now at what the final program is going to be for our compound interest program. The slide as you see it shows all the text not in boldface as you've normally seen it here before. The reason is none of this has changed. This is exactly as it was before. If you look here at the bottom of the slide in the code that is in boldface this is the new addition. It starts with a comment that says, print the principal for every 20th year. Now, every 20th year means 1625, and then 1645, and then 1665, and so on. If I divide the year by 20, I want a remainder of 5. So I write, if year mod 20 is equal to 5, system out println year equals percent 4D, tab, Principal equals dollar sign percent 13.2 F, and then a new line. After this control string that I just read, we'll have year and principal. Then, after the closed brace, you'll see print the values for the last year. If the last year is, for example, 2022, it would not be printed otherwise. We want to see it for the most recent year. So we will write system out printf year equals percent d tab principal equals dollar percent 13.2 f new line and then again year and principal and as always we end with a closed brace for the main method and we then have a closed brace for the class the next example and our last example in this lecture set is a program that will calculate a grade in a course as it reads here, Professor Smith gives n tests during the term and uses a grading system where each test is 1 divided by n of the course grade. Assuming that the average of the test grades translate into a letter grade as follows, 90 plus is an A, 80 all the way up to 89.9 is a B, 70 to 79.9 is a C, 60 to 69.9 is a D, and below 60 is an F, let's see if we can write a program that will allow us to calculate a student's grade. Let's take a look and see what inputs are available to us and what outputs are we required to provide. The number of tests are the first input followed by the test grades for the student. We're going to produce and provide to the user the test average and the course grade. We know that a 90 plus grade is an A, 89 to 90 is a B, 70 to 80 is a C, 70, 60 to 70 is a D, and below 60 is an F. So we have the basic information here. The test average is going to be the sum of the tests divided by the number of tests that we have. So our initial algorithm is going to be find the number of tests, find the average of N tests, and provide the corresponding letter grade and print it out. In this particular case, I've left off the things that we have before it for declaring the header for the class, and we're only looking at the code for the main method within it. 
public static void main open paren string close open close brackets args close parenthesis open brace we now have some variables to declare our scanner scanner keyboard equals new scanner system in int this test which is keeping which is counting the tests up for us num test the total number that we have total this grade float test average car course grade let's find out the number of tests first system out print lin, open parenthesis quote how many tests did you take question mark close quote close parenthesis semicolon and then we read it in num test equals keyboard dot next int open and close parentheses semicolon we begin the loop with four this test equals zero semicolon this test is less than num tests semicolon this test plus plus close parenthesis open brace inside we have system dot out dot printlin open parenthesis quote what grade did you get on this test question mark close quote close parenthesis semicolon this grade equals keyboard dot next int open close parenthesis semicolon we will end the loop with add it to the total and the statement total equals total plus this grade and then a close brace to end the loop we write the comment find the average and then test average equals total divided by num tests semicolon now find the letter grade corresponding to the average and then now we'll have if test average is greater than or equal to 90 course grade equals a else if test average is greater than or equal to 80 course grade equals b else if test average is greater than or equal to 70 course grade equals c else if test average is greater than or equal to 60 course grade equals d else course grade equals f please note that the conditions here are all in parentheses although i haven't spoken about them and that the letters in each case a b c d and f are all inside single quotes because they are single characters we finished the main method with printing the results System.out.println, open parenthesis, quote, your test average is, unquote, plus test average, close parenthesis, semicolon. Then, system.out.println, open parenthesis, quote, your grade will be, close quote, plus course grade, close parenthesis, semicolon, and a close brace for the main method. Obviously, I would have a class header at the beginning with an open brace, and after this method, another closed brace to close the class.